How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this animation right here. It's really fun, it's really quick, and it's super easy. But before I get into that, today's video is brought to you by the Material Builder. The Material Builder is a really cool tool that takes all the time out of creating procedural materials. Over 100 group nodes ranging from custom patterns and textures that you've never seen to special nodes that give your material sand and other really cool effects. Using a really fun plug and play workflow, you can make hundreds of different unique materials made for cycles. If you would like to learn more about the Material Builder Suite, hit the link in my description. Now let's get back into the tutorial. First off, I do want to shout out Ness Graphics. This design is inspired by one of the concert visuals he made, and I thought it'd be really cool to try to recreate that. So all credit for the design in this animation goes to this guy. He's incredible. Check out his work. So what you're going to need to do to get these patterns is download JS placement. So you're going to go just look up JS placement. It's going to be on windmillart.net. You can go here and just download it. It's completely free. Use the installer, follow the directions, and we'll go straight into designing this animation. So we have this whole thing. What I'm going to do is just go and get in a new file and don't save. So make sure you are in the EV rendering engine here. You'll hit the little camera icon, go to EV, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and motion blur if you'd like to have some motion blur. So what I'm going to do, because this is going to be a looping animation, is I'm, I'm going to use my box method that I use in all of my looping animations. So you'll click plane, and then the size of this will be S. Eight, so it'll be in an increment of eight. And this cube is only there to be a visual guide to make sure everything is fitting in to this so it'll loop seamlessly with no glitches and jumps. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get in my cube here. And I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key for me. And I'm gonna click front. And I wanna space this guy out to be right about there. So we're kind of using um, this blue line here as a guide. What I'm gonna do here is hit Alt D so we can make an instance. And then we're gonna go over here and same increment here, right about there. We can use these really cool grids. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down and give it about the same distance from the red line. We'll go Alt D again, bring it up. And now we have this really cool kind of boxy thing. I wouldn't say it's really cool, but <laughs> it's there. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down Shift and click all these guys. We're gonna go here to the transform section so keep your eye on the Y here. So holding down control, we're gonna make it snap to the grid until that Y says eight. Because we scale this by eight, we want these to be right on the line, right there, because that's where the camera's gonna start as well. We're doing these just to make sure everything loops really nicely. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead, go to the top here. I'm gonna hit Alt D and I'm gonna start holding down control and duplicating, hitting Alt D again instancing these little cubes here. You might say, why don't you use an array? Well, I like flexibility in different in all my different scenes, and especially if we're gonna be mapping things uh, in terms of texture, just kind of make sure it makes it easy for no mistakes to be made, different things like that and flexibility. Uh, that's really the only reason I'm not using an array. So again, holding that, and we're gonna stop it right there. So now we have all these guys perfectly spaced out exactly the same. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get in a really big cube. Now this cube's purpose is gonna be served to uh, make volume or fog, but I wanna put it in just now so we can get that going. And then I'm gonna go ahead to this little wrench. I'm gonna click on, on the, I'm gonna click on the transform, go to uh, viewport display and click wire. So now we have that and we can delete this. So I don't like where these guys are positioned exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit H hide the cube, highlight these guys, and then I'll go ahead and just bring that cube back. And then hitting the tilde key, we're gonna move these guys exactly in the center of our cube so that it's nice right there so that it will seamlessly loop. All right, so now let's go ahead and start unwrapping some of these cubes. So I'm gonna hit tab and bring this over here to edit mode, and that's gonna highlight all of these fun guys. So I'm gonna go to unwrap and cube projection. So if you go to the UV editor, you can see now we got a nice projection. We'll go here to shading, and now we have that. Let's go ahead and jump into JS placement. So I'm gonna exit out and show you guys how to use it. So I'm gonna go to my search, click on JS placement, and then once that loads, we're gonna click right here, and I'm gonna go to JS placement classic, click that. And now we have this. I'm just gonna leave it there. If you wanna change up your settings, you can. To me, I like the way it looks now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save the height onto my desktop. And then we're also gonna go ahead and go to dot grid. 
and then don't go to that and you can just kind of mess with your settings and then click save height for our dot grid as well. So we'll just put that on your desktop or wherever you'd like to save it. So now we're going to click new here. Make sure you have the node wrangler add on enabled. I'm going to hit control T and I'm hit G to bring these to view here. I'm going to open, go to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and find that JS placement right there. Now it's mapped to all of our pieces because we instanced them. All right, now what we're going to do is edit them a little bit more. So I'm going to delete this principle here and I'm going to get a mix shader. So we can add two new shaders here. We're going to get an emission and we're going to get a transparent TRA, transparent BSDF, plug transparent to the top, emission to the bottom. And then we want to separate these two guys. So we're going to plug the color into the factor. So now you can start seeing some stuff happening, but we're going to go ahead and activate this transparency because it doesn't activate by default. So I'm going to click on this little material properties button here, right here on settings, you'll go to blend mode to alpha blend. And now you have transparency on your JS placement. Now that that's there, I'm going to go ahead, hit Z and go to the rendered view click on my world and bring it down here to black. So now that we have this, and then one thing I'm going to do here is click on the big cube. I'm going to click new, delete the principled shift a search and get in a principled volume. And what that's going to allow us to do is kind of fade these guys into the distance. Really cool uh, motion graphics trick. So now you have that really cool look, really fun little hack. Um, that's not really how volume volume is supposed to be used normally, but it's motion graphics and we're just doing it as we do it. So let's click on one of these guys, emission. We're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp so we can customize the color of our emission. So we'll click that, put color into color. We'll plug the color of the image texture into there. So now we can go ahead and make this guy nice and bright, make it nice and orange. And then um, I'm actually gonna, and we'll take this guy and make it closer toward the yellow. So we get this beautiful vibrant color like this. And then you can actually bring that in if you want to make it more red or more yellow. And then we can take our big cube here because it's now it's really bright. We can go ahead and fade it in like this. And now we have this really cool scene. So now what I'm going to do here is highlight all of these guys. I'm going to hit M to make a new collection, new collection and call it. Um, I'm just going to say run anything because the camera's going to run through it. So I figure that's an appropriate name, but you can name it whatever you want. Now I'm going to hit shift a collection instance and click on run. And then we're just going to, uh, of course, hold down control. So it snaps. That's extremely important. And you can kind of gauge if this will loop by looking at the boxes, the boxes have to touch right here, these two big ones. And so because there's volume, we don't have to worry about seeing too much. We'll go to about right there and we're perfect. So now I'm going to hit the tilde key, go to the front, shift a, add my camera. I'm going to hold down control, looking at the Y here, making sure it's all the way here at eight. Now we have that and we can go look at our render. So for me, not the best view. So I'm going to click on my camera, go to the green camera icon, and we're going to bring our view pretty far back, something like that. So when we kind of travel through, we get a really cool view. Now I'm going to keep my settings here on the timeline at default at 250. If you go to your edit preferences, because now we're going to go and run the camera through this scene, go to preferences, click on animation and make sure your default interpolation is on linear. That's super important. Um, let's go ahead and click on the Y here at negative eight. Make sure you hit the back arrow. So you start at frame zero, go to the end and click eight, and that will make a perfect loop. So if we press play here, now our camera is running through this really, really cool scene. Now you remember that dot grid we downloaded. We haven't actually used that yet. So let's go ahead and get that really cool dot grid going. So I'm gonna hit shift a go here and click on a plane. Now the planes in here, I'm going to go and hit R X 90 and then I'm holding down control. Actually, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the right. And then I'm just going to sort of eyeball him right here to the middle because it doesn't have to be too perfect. So I'm going to go, I think right there's the perfect middle. And then I'm going to scale it up to fit the size of these boxes like this, something like that. Now I'm going to hit alt D holding down control. And then I'm gonna hit these two guys, alt D 
doing that. And now we have all of these really cool pieces. I think I need to do one more. So Alt D, holding down control, boom. Now what I'm gonna do is add the texture. So we'll go back to shading here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of these guys. I'm gonna right click and copy. Here I'm gonna click new, delete this. And then I'm going to paste, plug the mix shader into the surface. And then we need to go ahead and um, replace the dot grid. So we'll go out here, click on the dot grid and we are done. Now we can just go ahead and add some color to this guy, something like that, emission strength up. And uh, we can't see through it and that's just because I forgot one thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plane here, go to this little, um, material settings, go to blend mode to alpha blend. Okay, now we got it. And now we have this really, really cool animation. One thing I forgot to do is add all of those planes to the collection. So go ahead and click on all these planes and hit M, click on run and add that plane to all of them so that they don't run out once we get to the end. And we have a really cool seamless loop here for our animation. So there you go. That's how you make this animation right here. If you want to go ahead and export it, you'll click on this little printer icon. If you want to do a PNG sequence, your uh, settings should be there already. Just click PNG and make sure you specify where you want to export it. If you want to just export it out as a already created video, go to FFmpeg video encoding, make that MP4 and then output quality, make it perceptually lossless and go to render render animation. And when you're done, you'll have a really cool animation. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out the Material Builder Suite linked in the description and uh, hope you learned some stuff. Thanks for watching.